My name is Martin Horvath, and I'm a biochemist, a, a professor in the biology department, and I run a, a research lab as well. Yeah, I, I, um, I've been uh, working at the University of Utah for 17, almost 18 years now, and I think many uh, people at my state, at this stage in their career that where I am, they would probably have let go of uh, be bench work, uh, but I, I really enjoy doing experiments with my students or uh, on my own, and so, uh, and, and recently I, I just did a six month sabbatical where I really was reliving my graduate school and postdoc years, and I was very much uh, working at, at, at the bench. The type of work I do, um, it, uh, I, I try to make uh, proteins and uh, in sufficient quantities so I can study their structures and their biophysical properties, understand mechanism of how proteins work, and, and so I'm, I'm very much at the molecular level. And these are all uh, molecules having to do with life, uh, biological chemistry, biochemistry, and this means that we're working in, uh, usually in water aqueous solutions, and, and there's, uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'll be making buffers to maintain the pH and salt solutions to maintain the ionic strength for experiments that I'm doing. And uh, the beginning part of a project often begins with, um, starts with creating the DNA needed to encode these proteins of interest. And so there's a lot of cloning, molecular biology, uh, PCR, uh, those, those type of experiments. And then later on, uh, we'll be cultivating cultures of bacteria cells usually, but, but uh, more recently mammalian cells. Uh, and these cells are, you can think of them as factories for, for manufacturing the proteins that, that I'll later purify from, from those, those cells. Well, I, th I, th I think a lab notebook is one of the most important tools that I use in my practice of science and, and research. It's a, it's a place where I collect my thoughts, make plans, and, and, and of course document what it is I'm doing uh, and what I'm observing in any given experiment. Of course, uh, once it's completed, it's, it's, a, it's a record of what you've uh, been thinking about and what you've accomplished and, and measured in the, in the lab. So it's really important as a, as a reference and if it ever came down to uh, sort of uh, backing up the assertion that you've completed some experiment that you have your notebook as, as primary evidence. Um, and more conceptually, I think of it as a place where I record what I do in the lab and what I'm thinking about. Those are the two main functions as a, as a record. Yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, as I, te I teach, I teach a lab class and I, the students I think are familiar with like recording measurements and what, what maybe the, the actions that they execute in the lab. But I think the, the most important part of the notebook is a place to record your, your thinking. And uh, so at the beginning of an experiment, uh, at, at, at the beginning of a, a, a notebook entry, I, if I'm disciplined, I will also provide a, uh, a, a, a purpose or what was the motive for, for the experiment, in addition to the more familiar landmarks like the, the title of the experiment and, and the date and what it is I plan to do, I'll, I'll try to, to have a con conceptual understanding of why we are doing the experiment to, to begin with. And then this, this idea of um, uh, recording your, what you're thinking about. Uh, in the beginning, students may simply be following instructions because they were told to do a particular experiment, and, but at least articulate that. So I, I, I often begin there. If, if, if the motive is that because somebody told me to do it, then write in your notebook who told you to do it, and, and that, that's at that level where you are now, that's, that's the purpose uh, for the motive or the goal of your, your current experiment. I, I, I definitely encourage uh, students, and I do this in my own practice, at, at the end of completing an experiment, uh, when you're sort of reflecting on what happened, to, to make pretty clear landmarks, um, you know, a frowny face if things didn't work, and uh, sunshine, uh, uh, whatever artistic level you can muster up, just to uh, punctuate those experiments that really worked and where you felt like things are going in the right direction. Because those, those um, personalized, uh, s symbolic language, that, that's going to help you when you're 
flipping through the pages later on, looking for those uh, experiments that worked and, and avoiding the ones that uh, were, you know, where things didn't, didn't work. Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think it takes a certain amount of discipline to you know, uh, keep the, the notebook up to date. And, and I, I, re I really recommend just using the notebook as you work rather than uh, treating it as a, as, as a museum piece or as a uh, sort of creating the events after they've, they've happened. I, I still use a, a paper uh, version of the notebook, so uh, I don't care if I spill chemicals on the, the paper notebook. It, it's further evidence that the notebook was actually present when I was doing the experiment. And so I, I encourage students, and I, I do this myself, I, I keep the notebook at, 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 my, at my bench while I'm, while I'm working. I'll jot down uh, uh, calculations if, if I'm, even, even simple things. I try to just be really disciplined about uh, re recording things as, as, I'm, as I'm working. It's hard for students to know what should go in the notebook and what, what can be just referenced. Uh, uh, for instance, when I'm teaching this lab course, I, I often provide a procedure, and uh, I, I don't uh, think it's productive for the students to simply copy the procedure as it was written by me into their notebook. I, I'd rather prefer that they um, you know, reference the procedure, which is document, which is present somewhere else, and then write down those, uh, those, those details that are particular to their experiments. Getting that balance of what gets recorded and what, is, uh, what, what would be o okay to just reference uh, as an outside source, that's, that's uh, something that students struggle struggle with. When you get to do the experiment, it's, it's, it's great if you have the instructions kind of internalized uh, so you're not uh, continually re-reading and re-reading. And, and for me, I will often sort of collect the instructions, the actions that I want to execute and, and, and like you say, paraphrase them in a shorthand way. So, I, so I, it's, it sort of serves as a checklist to make sure you haven't left anything out as you're, as you're, as you're many, many of the uh, procedures that I'm doing in, with this biochemical work require you know 40 or 50 steps. It, it'd be really easy to uh, throw everything into the into the sink uh, or lose track of where you are if, if you're not uh, careful. And so it, it it can be as simple as just having a checklist of things I, I want to make sure I, I accomplish before the experiment's done. I I know right now that there's a notebook where I I kind of wrote down the strategy that I had applied for this very large computer program that I was writing and I cannot find that lab notebook and and that is um, a source of great concern right now I, I think I gave it to my advisor and and he said he doesn't he says he doesn't have it anymore so keeping track of your notebooks and maybe making backup copies of your notebook is a is, is a, probably a lesson from this this story um, and and that may be what's motivating the, the, the push to go to electronic formats for the notebook because it, it's, it's a simple matter of data backup to, to, get, a, to get a backup copy of, of, of those type of notebooks. I, you know, I go over like, the, the format that I use and in, in, in how I think about notebooks. And I try to emphasize to students that ultimately, once they've been doing this for a while, they're, they're going to have their own particular style. So there, there is. Uh, different levels of rigidity or flexibility in how you approach your your, your notebook, um, and I think the the most important thing is that you you see it as a, a useful a tool that furthers your science, not uh, a, a source of busy work to satisfy some some somebody else's expectations. Um, yeah, certainly. I, I mean, I've never been in industry or the pharmaceutical um, uh, type of work, but. I, I believe that there, there there's there's a lot more liability involved and, and there there's a, a much more rigid set of rules for what gets included and I, I think at Merck one of my advisors was describing how every single square of your notebook has to have some sort of writing uh, present to uh, I, I suppose to uh, avoid the situation where somebody could add notes after after the fact um, I, I, I I'm, I'm certain that that every Every uh, instructor has some uh, different perspective on the notebook. Um, I think in my experience, I have uh, thought about the notebook more than others have, and I think there's uh, 
but there's certainly room for um, for continual re-examination of what exactly the notebook is doing for the students and, and for for I, I I've been pretty lucky that the the the, the students who s seem to perform well they they also in, in many cases they they do really well with keeping uh, the notebook uh, certainly up to my standards and e even better than the notebooks that I, I keep myself I, I I think probably what would be really useful is to just start documenting at whatever level you are at and then show your notebook uh, to the the person who's supervising you your mentor it might be a graduate student or or the professor uh, him or herself uh, and just get some feedback early on 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 the habits that you you've uh, are, are before they sort of get ingrained and it's hard to hard to change them so uh, the practice of reading somebody else's notebook I think could probably be really instructive and and, and then you can pick and choose those things that you want to apply to your own notebook. So. I, I still use a, a paper uh, version of the notebook, so uh, I don't care if I spill chemicals on the, the paper notebook. It, it's further evidence that the notebook was actually present when I was doing the experiment. I think um, there's, there's a big push to, to go to electronic uh, formats, and, and I think that's great, but you, you would definitely want to invest in a, some kind of laptop that is waterproof and uh, for the, the type of biochemical work that I do where there is a risk for, for your tool getting wet.